Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Nexus Gaming series. We are here in Division B West. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we have the members of Uwu, and on the right, it is going to be the members of Better Than Bots. Thank you all for joining me. As I said, as we get into Volskaya Foundry, let's go ahead and find out how we got here. The home team this evening is going to be the members of Uwu. They lost the coin flip, banning out Hanamura and Towers of Doom. Uh, better than bots won the coin flip, opting for map pick priority for game number one, banning out Infernal Shrines, Braxis Holdout, and choosing to take us to Volskaya Foundry for game number one. Let's get back into our draft and find out what we have here for initial bans, as it will be a May. Clumsy, how you doing? Welcome everyone. Steampunk Wookie, good to see you as well. Rob Christie, oh my god, so many cute people in chat. Thank you. Gives popcorn all to chat. Thank you, Sunny. We do have a diva ban, as uh, well. Diva's been. Diva's been terrifying in the current meta, so I don't blame people for getting rid of her whatsoever. Oh, let's see. Volskaya Foundry. We're in Division B. Hmm. I feel like we we might want to consider the Kael'thas, Jaina, Gul'dan, Mephisto. Like, I think we consider a wow. Wow. Never casting this team ever again. The rudeness. The rudeness. Right, Bandit? I can't believe... I mean, how can they not choose Cho'Gal? Right? Up, bud. Sorry, he's like staring at the ceiling intensely. Uh, pretty good, great caster for this game. Thank you so much, Clumsy. I appreciate that. So Cho was banned out. No, no, no fun shenanigans this game. Brightwing will be removed. That might be a target. But I want to point out as well, we do see that there is coffee on the opposing side, and this is the coffee who does enjoy playing Kale Zod. I don't think it's something that's going to pop up in the early portions of our draft. Um, that might have been a target ban on the Selexia now that I'm seeing an F in chat. You need more U's? Excuse me. U-W-U. Is that better? First pick, though, it's going to be a Garrosh. Uh, the Garrosh makes a lot of sense. A lot of good control, displacement, setup, lockdown. Uh, the Garrosh can be a really, really big pickup pick and setup for them. We'll see what they go into with this as well, because there's a lot of good directions. We actually just watched... In a Division A game, they went into like Grey Main Zarya and they just had this kind of, you know, walk the Grey Main, have them run in there, and they're able to just burst them down with the Grey, excuse me, walk the Garrosh in there with the speed boost uh, shield, and then the Grey Main's able to dive in and, and capitalize on the CC train that they're able to provide. Decker Kane ETC will be grabbed for the members of Better Than Bots, as uh, there's a really good combos laying with just between the Decker Kane and ETC. Power slide into Scroll of Ceiling. Harajuk Cube has so much setup. Uh, Stay well and listen's a big one for ETC as well, because they can just go mosh pit into that as well. So they're just kind of layered, uh, layered heroics right there. On the opposing side, if they want to deny any sort of like Jaina shenanigans with the ETC, they could grab that there. But it's going to be an Artanis actually. I believe this is a Yuna special, and we have a Hanzo coming out as well. I'm excited to see the Hanzo play because I actually haven't seen much Hanzo as of late and it's just always excited to see the Archer uh, trying to throw out some arrows here and there. We did have a little bit of Hanzo play during CCL, some narrow arrows uh, definitely throughout the weekend. It's fun when you're the caster and you're not the one who's narrowly missing every single arrow because that's usually what happens when I'm streaming my perspective of my Hanzo play. On it to be banned out, not a bad ban whatsoever. The members of uh, Uwu do need a healer so just targeting that out as a, it's a strong healer and they could could still go into the Kel'Thuzad, so Nano Boost to Kel'Thuzad, not something I really want to deal with. The opposing side, though, they can ban out what? Decker Kane ETC? I actually think a Jaina ban. If they don't plan to take Jaina on the side of Uwu, they could ban it out, and better than bots would have a lot of synergy with it. Good poke, good setup, but it's actually going to be Lunara. Might be a might be a target ban more than anything else, but this still does, wow, that leaves an immediate Tracer pickup and an Abathur as well, wow. Not what I was expecting. Haircut is looking sharp today, my man. The effort is, uh, do you put, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, uh, I'm just bald. <laughs> Uh, no, you're not seeing an Elgato ring light. 
Corsair actually canceled my order again, so I have to deal with that. Corsair's been canceling my orders, uh, cause just issues. So this was actually, I actually bought this ring light off of Amazon like two days before Elgato released their ring light. And I was talking to my friend who works for Elgato. I was like, my dude, and he's just like, dude, just return the ring light from Amazon. And then my order got canceled. So I'm like, good thing I didn't return the ring light from Amazon. But yeah, no, this is just, this is just a cheap Amazon one. Uh, Zarya will be uh, picked up on the right hand side and that'll round things out. That makes a lot of sense with the tracer. Alarak and Lucio were on the left hand side, so they don't have the Zarya to speed boost with the shield barrier, but they still have this Lucio, which is a strong pickup regardless for them. I like these drafts on both sides really, really well. Like I, I love these drafts. These are awesome. These are such, this is going to be such a good game number one here. Coffee Alarak? Yeah, dude. Yeah, Tireless Pro. Tracer, Abba, and Daguerrash. Good luck. Uh, better than bots. Could be good, could be bad. We'll see. The uh, the the Zarya is going to be a big factor. Tracer hyper carry, yeah. Uh, the the Zarya is going to be interesting. I forgot Zarya was in huts. <laughs> That's fair. I, there's so many heroes. I, I do the same thing too. Sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah, there is that. You could easily have gone into that a hundred percent. Either way, we have found our observers. So let's go ahead and get on into game at number one. On the left-hand side, we have the members of the Chugga 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 Ooh Woos. We have Peg on the, excuse me, Peng on the um, Garage. <laughs> we have Unileska on the Artanis. Lexi will be on the Lucio, Big Bird on the Hanzo, and Coffee on the Alarak. On the right-hand side, we get the members of our red team. Megan420 will be on the Deckard Kane. Five Aces will be on the ETC. Evil Otto will be on the Zarya. Dr. Evil will be on that. Uh, Abathur and Crafty Trent on the Tracer. Check out our level ones and check out our first lane engagement as it's going to be a redemption-based Hanzo here. We also do have the... Um, not feel the heat, the Demolitions Expert at level 1 for the Zarya to be able to uh, increase the... I believe it's just you're getting cooldown reduction on your particle grenades, right? It's also increased radius as well, okay. So you have a quest that is is being lowered as it goes through, as that's a massive swap on a Tracer who has to use the recall potion from Megan420 right on point, as Abathur is just going to be sitting over here on the right-hand side, just still able to uh, be a giant slug. I'm just going to hang out in mid lane for now as the rotations will break off into top and mid, and uh, Artanis into bottom lane. Now, here's the thing that I'm most curious about is how are they going to deal with solo lane? Is this just an ETC hanging out down here the entire time, or is this just going to be Tracer? Uh, like, it's just, it's it's an odd one because their draft is, um, well, it's lacking wave clear. Tracer does, excuse me, Abathur offers a little bit of wave clear with the hat value. Sonic Arrow over the wall to try and find some extra damage into the Tracer, but not going to be able to whatsoever. Do we see any hunting onto Abathur as the game progresses as well? Because that was one of the things that we were, uh, when we were interviewing... Mene over the weekend during CCL, uh, they were pointing out that they loved Abathur Hunt, so when they were playing Zagara on Garden of Terror in the final three-game series that started out Saturday, that was just something we asked them about. They were like, yeah, I love just, if I see if I see an Abathur, I will hunt them consistently throughout the game, especially if I'm able to be like a Li Ming and just jump over the wall, burst them down, get the reset, and blink back over. So, really cool things just coming out from them. We'll see if that's the case in our game number one here, but bo both teams back and forth fairly consistently. Really good just over Overall, lane soak, no one really losing out, no one getting picked off. A little bit of an experience gap starting to form here in favor for our blue team, but it might just because of the wave clear uh, coming out from them uh, a little bit faster. So we're just seeing that experience come through. And as Garrosh Peng is just stepping onto this point, Abathur throws the hat onto Tracer, who does get hit by the Groundbreaker. Going to take a lot of damage themselves from Hanzo and friends as Coffee has rotated in. Five Aces is looking to try and work their way onto this point, but it will be stolen away. Coffee finds the combo into Tracer, who gets thrown back. Recall puts them right in front of Lucio as they they try and get some sort of bopper slow into them. Not going to happen. Swap comes out into five aces. They get the power slide through. That's going to be a telekinesis to pull them back. And this is five aces going down. First blood over to the blue team as the spray will come out. And we have our control point A opening up in 25 seconds. This will push them up a little bit in experience. Crafty getting low in bottom lane. Artanis doesn't find the swap into them. And Unileska will just continue to soak out lane or their friendly team. Neither team was able to grab their fortification camp, excuse me, their siege camp for the top lane, so no off pressure during this objective phase for now. Actually, is Megan's gonna start this? No, they're just checking. I'm not even 100% sure. They actually might be rushing over here just to make sure that they're gonna, they're gonna be able to invade onto this camp, but they don't have anyone here in time. ETC is still rotating through mid lane, so looks like Selexia will have the channel onto this. Evil Auto's gonna get tossed. Is there a push off from Lucio? They get pulled back in by Coffee, and Zarya goes down. Swap will connect onto the pixel of Megan. 
gonna drop themselves a scroll of ceiling, but Lucio is gonna push off and bop him around. Pulse bomb onto Selexia. They find the counter kill from Tracer as Crafty doesn't get hit by the silence from Coffee. So they do put up a kill of their own on the side of the red team, but this is control point A, open and available. Big Bird still stacking up that redemption from level one. Did go into the never outmatched at level four, which is gonna give them increased auto attack range and it will also instantaneously kill a minion. So I believe it gives you 1.1 range increase. I might be wrong on that. Excuse me, uh, by two for three seconds. So it's actually a two range increase. And Hanzo base range, I'm trying to look off the top of my head. Um, I don't know, actually. Base range is 6.5, because it's 8.5 right now, and there's no way it's base 8.5. Actually, mm, I might be wrong on that. We'll take a peek at it as the game progresses. Regardless, seven's up in favor for the members of the blue team as they have 60% and rising on this trigger up protector, but the red team not too far off. What is better than robot, excuse me, better than bots able to step onto this? Groundbreaker goes out, will connect onto the toe of Tracer. That's gonna be the first half of the quest finished out. Coffee being dove on right now. Pulse bomb onto them. Yuna and friends are gonna grab this camp, but there's actually no one to actually grab it, so Coffee has to grab the fortification camp, but they have a bot committer and two fortifications in their pocket. Three, actually. As they now step in, Yuna gonna get the swap onto one. Evil Otto is gonna get some shielding onto themselves. Groundbreaker comes out from Peng, but they don't find anyone, and they manage to get the burst from Hanzo for the kill and a secondary as well as they finish out. The redemption from level one. Hanzo making some massive plays, but the friendly team really, really just amplifying what they're able to do right there. And I believe, yeah, so 8.5 is the range when it is increased, because I did see them auto-attacking into minions. Yuna Leska rotating into top lane and will be able to just continue to push way out. Also, they've got their camp coming in as well. Tracer gets silenced. Is there enough damage? They get a blink to the side. They're gonna able to get a full heal somehow, some way. And wow, I can't believe that right there. That was that was not what I was expecting in that moment. I was ex I was expecting to see the tracer go down. Yuna though does soft push the front gate. This will be them just stepping into the bottom portion of this. Oftentimes, teams will prioritize the more upper portion of the lane and kind of work in through that top wall just so they take less damage from the towers, but I don't think they're too worried about that right now. They've got a pretty healthy uh, trigger lock protector, and they've still got 20-some seconds on this, so a bit of time as uh, Crafty's trying to chase it onto Big Bird. That's going to be a scroll of ceiling on the ground, and they don't even need the trigger lock protector damage. They find the tracer kill. They should be able to confirm an ETC, and with this, the fort as well. It's only 13 seconds left, but they've got great C on the members of Chugga Chugga Chugga. Ooh, woo. <laughs> They do get the fort, which this is actually massive because now they have uh, they have the entire lane to press into the enemy side during control point B, which will be up and available somewhere in the eight minute 15 ish mark. So this will be our next objective phase. And it just means that it's so much more difficult for our red team to sustain over that point since there's no well, there's no tower. The enemy team can chase you all the way to your keep front gate. And they also do have 10 talents here on top of all this. Let me rotate through some of those other numbers for all of you to get an idea. But the Abathur Mule will be coming out just to try and heal up some of these structures and provide some supplemental I, I just just defensive defensive tools I, is, is a good way to put it. Crafty gets the recall. There's a Warlord challenge. They get thrown in place. They go down. Tracer tried to make one itty bitty play and they end up getting picked off. You can see Ruby value coming out from Megan. Not going to be enough, though, as there's too much floor juice, but no one able to pick up said floor juice on time in time. Uh, what do we have for heroics, though? Ultimate Evolution, Decker Kane, stay well. And listen, Zarya is holding, I don't expect, wow, I was going to say, I don't expect it to be Graviton Surge, but this is going to be another Graviton, is there something in the water? We have had so much Zarya play today. She hasn't had any changes. Why, why, why is, why are all the teams all of a sudden just like, yeah, Zarya, hell yeah, because we've technically had three games in a row of Zarya, and even the replay we did had a Zarya in it on top of it, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, it, interesting, interesting to say the least. So enthusiastic, I try my best for all of you. <laughs> I give the people what they want. So five aces will just uh, push up bottom lane. You know, going to be holding back from the back by the front gate. They don't need to play this super aggressive into them. And I like the way that they're actually just considering this. They're like, cool, the wave can come into me. I can let my friendly team rotate around. And this is just going to be us slowly getting into 13s. And uh, our next uh, trigger lock protector should be announced in the next like 15 seconds or so. I believe it's a two minute. No, it's I think it's a two minute 30 announcer. So it's actually going to be eight minute 45 if, if I'm caster mathing this right. Groundbreaker. 
They just get the poke onto them. Nine stacks out of the 15 for the uh, Warbreaker for the Garrosh. Uh, for anyone wondering, the Alarak is at 131 Sadism. What, what can we, uh, let me break this down for all of you as well. Where is the Sadism coming from and how is it going? So we have Sadism reduced from level one by 10%. Gained from the takedowns, which we'll just round here and say 14 because of the 10 reduction. Show of force from level four is going to be at 14, which is going to mean that they can they can get three more stacks on that one. And they have right of Shakir, um, which I don't remember off the top of my head. Is that the auto attack based one? Is that autoing into the enemy team gives you? No, it's the activation mark. Sorry, I always forget. There's there's because there's the one that where your friendly members die. There's one where you get auto attacks, and there's one where you place a mark. And I just always confuse uh, all of those. I just uh, the icon I know at least at least the green ones the one when your friendly members die, and the red ones for autos. Either way, 13 to 12 in our levels, 8 to 1 in kills, control point B up and available. This is a clone on Zarya coming out. They toss Unaleska away with the end of the fray, more of an out of the fray than anything else. And Evil Auto is, uh, no, Unit doesn't even go for the swap, I don't think, right there. Meanwhile, in top lane, the camp is pressing up, and they've got a catapult up there with it as well. We're 9 minutes and 22 in, so it's going to be 160 damage from those catapults coming out. No one on control point just yet, as it uh, looks like the Artanis and Lucy want to grab themselves a fortification camp and bolster their tools that they have for this. Megan scouts it out, throws a Haradra cube out, gets some healing on the ground, but doesn't really matter. Peng steps on the point, but actually doesn't go for the channel. I wonder if they're going to try and collapse in a mid lane on something. They do see Crafty. Now they just back off. I was waiting. I was just like, wait a minute. Right of butt cheer. Exactly. Exactly. Foreshadow. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce them half the time. I'm just doing my best. <laughs> One mosh can change everything. You're right, Spectrum. You are correct. One mosh could change this. Uh, we'll see if they're able to stack up and find that said mosh because there's a lot of good denial tools on the enemy side as well, or at least things to uh, delay out, or even just like you throw that, uh, that purifier beam on top of the ETC who's standing still. Hans are just poking out with a couple uh, scatter arrows. They do have their redemption finished out from level one. Yuna getting a hit with the Haradric Cube. Groundbreaker, excuse me, Warbreaker from level one finished out by the Garrosh right there. Super pots are out. This is just swap out from the Artanis, but no connection onto anyone. Scatter arrow once again. Power slide drops the ETC mosh, but it's going to be interrupted immediately by the bop from the Lucios. There's going to be the Purify Beam on top of five aces. Who's trying to walk away from this? They do have some speed, and that will actually get them away. Evil Auto so very low is going to get slept. Yuna almost finding the kill, but the sleep is just way too good from Megan Coffee now coming in, looking to make a play happen here. As they get a massive silence, they're looking to kill onto Evil Auto, but Crafty now steps into them, and this is Tracer recalling away. Hanzo finding an arrow. There's a swap out from Yuna, but it won't be able to go out onto anyone. And this is control point back over to the side of Chugga 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 Uwu. Only half the time? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right of Shakira, Shakira. Mm hmm. <laughs> uh, if this game makes it to level 20, Red Zarya Ulti will be the winning condition. Warlord Challenge going out right there, not going to connect onto Tracer, who's trying to back away. Gets a couple blinks out of there. They get tossed away as well. There's a scroll of sealing out from the from uh, Megan. It won't connect onto anyone as Peng is going to go down. Lucio, excuse me, the ETC is going to go down right there. There was a counter strike out from Alarak. Unaleska so very low. Does get some shield proc, but she ends up going down as well. Crafty gets the recall just above as Telekinesis almost found the kill into them. Coffee, coffee so very low. Will Crafty find the last little bit of damage into them? This is so much sadism to reset as they will not lose 143 sadism. Technically, it would have been 53 if I'm not mistaken. Still, it's a lot of sadism to lose and uh, control point goes over to the red team. We don't don't have the longest death timer so it's easy enough for them to to get back into this and, and try and rush basically back to point and look for this this counter fight it is going to be 16 to 16 though abbot there should be able to pull in that experience and even things up for the friendly team no spell armor why you do this to me yuna <laughs> Yuna now enjoying the uh, the joys of, of of competitive play where everyone in chat's just like, that's the build you're going? No. It's okay. 
No one gets to judge my builds because I just mispronounced half, uh, uh, half, the, half the names. That's a great combo going into Evil Auto, but the Lucio Boop is going to knock him back. The Soundwave, I mean, they still get the kill, but that was just a little delayed out. This can be still one. Listen, Mosh Pit coming out. Hanzo rips an arrow, and that's the Purifier Beam I was talking about during Mosh Pit. They find that up on top of uh, the ETC. Crafty trying to find the counter kill into Selexia. They're going to get some healing. They end up going down to the Abathur. The Abathur finding the Spine Needle into that... Lucio for the snipe, very well played, but still the members of Chugga 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 Uwu will be taking the second trickle out protector here. Where they take it's the question that I want to know. Did they go straight into bottom lane and open things up for control point C or are they looking for mid lane fort? Seems like it's mid lane fort. As a very sick beam, yeah. The the purifier beam was actually an interesting pickup, but I don't blame them because, like, yeah, you do have you do have the the suppression pulse to get the tracer blinds, but who else is really benefiting? Like, who else is being um, suppressed? Is actually the great word for that. Who's actually being suppressed by it? Because yes, I think Zarya would be a little bit tracer would be, but like, I just think the purifier beam is such a strong pickup into the etc mosh, but. Even then, you can go target Purified at level 20, and you can get the recast as well, which is... I love that. Like, there was actually, on, on Volskaya Thandria, there was a Tespa game as Crafty gets the recall in time. As the Rocket Fist into five aces, Graviton Surge pulls them in. They're going to jump out on the Trigla Protector. Tracer clone, Dr. Evil. <laughs> was trying to make something happen with that, but the, uh, the Trigla Protector is going to find the fort in bottom lane. Stay a while on the Trigla Protector. Won't yield much, but they do drop out. Power Slide, Mosh Pit. Not going to happen. Counter Strike from the Artanis comes, or excuse me, from the Art. Oh my god, from the Alarak comes out. They uh, don't get picked off, but they still find the kill into Garrosh during all this. Crafty chasing in. Big Bird going to have to use the agility over the wall. Coffee being slowed. Crafty, they're trying to counter dive into them. That's going to be the dash swap. There, get the blade dash into Tracer. She's going to go down, and Evil Auto is going to get pulled back in. Mosh Pit goes out onto three. There's nothing to interrupt this, but realistically, there's no damage either. So Five Aces is going to take most of the damage during all this. Coffee getting low, does need to back off. Evil Auto does, does not get the last particle grenade into them, and Coffee. Coffee lives. Gonna just go ahead and show off their mastery before they go ahead and hearth back for full health. And uh, that's 169. Nice sadism on coffee. Meanwhile, Abathur's just doing Abathur things in top lane. And they're gonna grab a camp for bottom. Just pushing things out and trying to close that experience gap that is starting to form. Was Blaze banned? I don't believe so. I don't believe there was a Blaze ban. Like 80% sure. How you doing, Miss Windup Bird? Nice mosh, butt mosh. Woo. <laughs> Every time you have to say chug and chug, I can hear you have to say, oh my god, yeah, exactly. Okay, what do we have for our level 20? Target purified from Yuna, so I'm happy. I'm, I just like that talent in general. I think it's great. Hanzo holding, I would expect play of the game. Uh, we could see the... Um, the Sonic Arrow upgrade. Actually, it is going to be Bullseye. I believe it's Bullseye at level 20 for them. So it's additionally, uh, it's additional radius, but it also is going to uh, stun for one second if they can hit someone. And it also has the increased cast speed of said arrow. So you're able to kind of, it's, there's a very small delay. So you can, it's easy to get that stun. Mule just doing what Mule does best in top lane. I do believe I might have missed saw that. Uh, either way, Abathur will push out said top lane as well and just uh, get that, get that experience and still, Level behind, they're going to invade onto this camp. No, they're just invading onto this side of the map. That's going to be a Garrosh Groundbreaker. There's a Graviton Surge out from Zarya. They're going to pop their Indomitable. They get pulled in. There's going to be a fight on the left-hand side. Crafty goes down. Moshpit comes out from the ETC that'll be interrupted by the Hanzo Arrow. There's going to be a dive in from the Alarak as the Counter-Strike comes in. The Deadly Charge able to set up a triple kill. Oh, just finding more kills in general. Abathur and Deckard, the last two alive. They move in through this bottom lane keep, and you can already see their posturing is enough to say we want to end game. We want to go up in our best of three series 1-0 and we want to take this first map and potentially set ourselves up for a 2-0. But first things first, they got to end the game. Second thing, well, we got to we got to see what happens in game number two. But either way, they are quickly burning through the shielding. That is going to be the uh, beam onto the onto Megan, who's just uh, kind of dancing around that as they uh, throw a couple potions here and there. But the core is falling a little too rapidly. And I think this will be game number one going over to the side of. Ooh, ooh. GG, well played.
<laughs> Mule in this economy? Yeah. We need beam resets. Yes, exactly. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, G uh, GG's for game number one. Toxic laser? Uh, during that game, Marbuckle, uh, Joke, uh, Jocko, Deadwish, Paper Tanks, Suzu, and Poppy. Thank you for the follows during that game. Very much appreciated. Hard to wombo off a of mosh in that comp. Yeah. I think uh, they had a lot of good ideas with this composition. Nothing against it. I just think their wave clear was lacking. Their team fight burst was lacking as well. Um, they have good damage, but they don't have any burst. Thank you, Clumsy, for the 69, my friend. It never hurts to uh, want to spear and slam an old man in the back line. Absolutely. Absolutely. <gasps> you could give the I still can't believe Abathur's Mule hasn't been changed to something more Zerg related. Now, as someone who does not know enough about StarCraft lore, is there anything in the Zerg uh, clan, I guess you could say, that uh, would yield them to have? Like, do they have a healing type unit in StarCraft? Would have loved to see stage dive and a second frontliner. Yeah, I think I think just more wave clear, like a, a like a like a Zool would have been cool in there or something like that. I don't know. Teeth cleaning for Bandit. Am I seeing this right? Hold on. Why isn't it in my chat? Why can I see it but no one else can see it? I see that you've done it, train wreck, but why is it not in chat? If Chugga wins this, uh, you get to do an interview. You have to ask them if the team name is a troll for the casters. Zerg Queen? Like Zagara? Uh oh, see so that might get confusing though, model wise. Co casted games? No. Oh, Baja and Bandit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Bandit is Bandit is my co caster. Actually, I am Bandit's co caster. Let's be real. How you doing, Pelagrosso? Teeth need to be clean. Why didn't it pop up in chat? I can see it. I don't know. Teeth cleaning either way. Bandit, you want to clean your teeth, bud? Want to clean your teeth? Yeah? Yeah? He's just licking his chops. All right, hold on. I can see it. I just don't know why it's not popping up in chat. It's just weird. All right, let's do a little alligator today. Bandit can have a little alligator. You want to clean your teeth? Yeah? Who's a good boy? Who's my little good boy? alligator. Thank you, Trainwreck, for redeeming the teeth cleaning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honestly, I'm surprised the team of former GMs crushing in Div B. Of course you redeemed it. I don't know. It's, it's weird that it doesn't show up in chat. Sorry, Bahamut, but it's true. He is the best. Oh, I know. I know Pelagroso. I'm, I'm, I agree. <laughs> but there wouldn't have been any counterplay as the healing would have just uh, happened and target is shut down. Hmm. That's fair. Name my new kitten bandit and forgot you already named. Oh, that's okay. I'm glad. I'm, I hope your kitten's adorable. Such a chill puppy. Oh, he's such a good boy. Yeah. He is, he is a, he is, he is definitely one of the best boys out there. Uh, I'm going to say ready, but I just realized that I'm not technically ready. So that's okay. Uh, team one won that. So that means that it's going to be map pick of that team. Interesting choices. So map pick from them and it's going to be this map. Let me update one thing and then we're pretty much ready to go on our end. Uh, so map win by them. This will be map choice by them. Bop, we're ready to go. Former GM here. Thanks for the compliment. I mean, here's the thing. NGS is based off of MMRs, so 
It's whatever their MMR is right now. It's not it's not what it used to be. I don't know. I don't know if people are making passive aggressive comments. Don't do it here. We're not here for that. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm good. Yeah. Time permitted, but Bahamut, how did we get here? Well, let me just tell you how we got to Tuma Spider Queen. Welcome back, everyone, to the Nexus Gaming Series, Division B West. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we have the members of Uwu, up one in our best of three series, and on the right, we have Better Than Bots. We find ourselves here on Tomb of the Spider Queen for game number two, and if you're sitting at home wondering how many GMs are actually here but want to know how we got to Tomb of the Spider Queen, I got you covered, my friends. The home team of Uwu lost the coin flip. They opted to, or excuse me, the opposing team opted for map pick priority for game number one. The members of Uwu banned out the maps of Hanamura and Towers of Doom. Better than bots banned out Infernal Shrines and Braxis Holdout. First map was Volsky Foundry, chosen by Better Than Bots, and they lost that. <coughs> Excuse me, as the losing team, they can either choose first pick or map pick. They opted they opted for for map pick priority for game number two. And this will be Tomb the Spider Queen, chosen by the members of Better Than Bots. Let's get back into our draft and see what we have for a first May ban from the members of our blue team. They do not want to deal with the Ice Queen. They just don't want to deal with her in general, and I don't blame that whatsoever. She is a little annoying to deal with, and she can be fairly tanky and also murky-ish, if that makes sense. Like, just, just like, her cryo freeze is kind of like safety bubble for me. I know you don't move during it, but, like, it's it's just, I don't know. It was, it was, it was funny. It's just, it's, it's, it's a funny talent that sucks to deal with. So yeah, just banning it out. Also, I mean, you could just go buy a grenade from Ana and that will help out our Emerald from the Decker King, but that, that also takes a little bit of a skill set. So just, she's annoying to deal with. I don't blame them for banning her out. Uh, the Diva on the right-hand side was banned out. Not a, I don't disagree with this either. Diva's just been so strong. We've seen it in the in-houses. We've seen it in the CCL exhibition matches. We've seen it in NGS. Come on, I'm never casting you again. I'm sorry, everybody. This is the last cast of Uwu. They can't, they don't want to play against Cho'Gal. Worst, the you know, worst kind of people don't want to play against Cho'Gal. I don't blame them though. Oh wait, there's a cat. There's a cat in Discord, hold on. Or in chat. Oh, your cat is adorable. Thank you, Miss Windebird, for sharing. Banwise on the right-hand side, do they respect the Garrosh from the last game? Wow, it's actually gonna be uh, Coffee's Kel'Thuzad. So they're targeting Coffee out. Uh, this, I guess you could Kel'Thuzad kind of early in this draft, but yeah, you could you could Kel'Thuzad in the one, two, three. Absolutely, actually. You should see the Cho'Gal mess I saw earlier. I want to see the Cho'Gal, like, what is up with the Here's the Storm community not wanting Cho'Gal, like, when did you all agree that Cho'Gal wasn't going to be played? Because, like, he got played last week, and then all of a sudden CCL happened, and people were like, he's not meta. And I'm like, no, he's meta. Pick him. Play him. Sorry, that's my that's my hill to die on. Lunara Lucy on the right-hand side will be grabbed. ETC on the left. So, already having some uh, setup coming out for the members of our blue team. Um... Ana's up and available, just go like Ana Jaina, personally. Like, I would say it gives you wave clear, it gives you the nano boost target, and you don't have to go Ana, but, or excuse me, uh, Jaina. I just really like the Jaina with the ETC, because you have the slowing, the slow from Water Elemental, and you also have the Ring of Frost Burst. Like, this, this is such a, like, the reason I harp on this is because this is such a good tried and true composition. Like, if you ever wanted to be like, oh man, like, what's a good thing for me to, like, try out with a team? This. Start out with this. This is a very basic wombo duo, triple, whatever. Like, even just Jaina ETC is such a good duo if you don't have a good skill shot based healer and you don't, and you're, you know, you're worried about hitting the sleep darts or, and, and the healing darts and you're just like, cool, nano boost is great, but I just can't do the rest. Jaina ETC are so good off the bat. So just. Anyone who's like, oh, I want to get better at combos or whatever, that's a good combo duo. Start out with that. Artanis will be respect banned away as they don't want to deal with that once again. So Unaleska having to play something else in the solo lane. We'll see what that's going to be. Last ban on the left-hand side. Uh, they could prioritize a, uh, a tank here. Garrosh is a little difficult for ETC players sometimes because, you know, you power slide in, they throw you away. You no longer have a power slide, so sometimes you have to hold that power slide up until you get tossed, which is a little bit of a nuisance. So I would maybe ban out the Garrosh myself. They're actually going to get rid of the Joanna. Still a solid tank as well, being able to group up the minions between the... 
excuse me, between the rotations of waves is just a really strong ability and talent to have, or excuse me, tool to have in your back pocket. Lunara Lucio on the right hand side. What do we get for our next two picks? They're, they still need main tank, they still need solo lane, and they still need a little extra wave clear. I don't hate them going into like a Ghoul Dan. Okay, all right. So Leoric into the solo lane, and then a Li Ming for reset potential. Their wave clear isn't lacking, but it's a little bit on the lower end for our red team, I do think. Better than bots is, it's not bad wave clear, but I think it's just gonna be, it's gonna be slower into the enemy teams as of currently. This is gonna be a powerhouse game. Big hitters are coming out. You think so, Bad Soda? You might know, you might you might know as you probably all watch Yuna and friends play a little bit more. Oh, it must be a male. Bots bots in a mood today, oh. Wow. Wow, Shy. Wow. Diablo? Diablo could work out 100%. Diablo into ETC would be good here. Diablo into this composition would be good as well. Apocalypse uh, with the Entomb, you have Leaming Reset potential, Leaping Strikes, or even Thornwood Vines if you wanted to go in that direction. Um, I think a Diablo would be a great pickup here. I agree with you, chat. 100%. I could I could make arguments for Garrosh. I could make arguments for Diablo. Muradin's an option as well, but yeah. It, the Garrosh is really strong too. Like it's 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 so it's like you either step into the Diablo or step into the ETC or you have them step into you. And based off their composition, like this composition here, this doesn't step into the enemy team. Excuse me, this this doesn't dive together very well. But a Lucio with a speed boost into a Garrosh, that is a good duo. So I actually like the Garrosh over the Diablo for the factors of synergistic within the team and also a little bit more control into the enemy side. You know, Graeming wants to dive into this. So you have the D uh, the Garrosh to throw them away. ETC wants to power slide in. You can throw them away. So there's a lot of good opportunities for the dive to be mitigated by the Garrosh. And that allows Lucio to speed boost anyone out. Maybe even use a sound barrier if necessary. Lunar and Li Ming able to supply some damage. but. My point still stands, I think. Their wave clear is a little bit on the on the lower end for the red team, and I'm harping a lot about wave clear tonight, but it's just what really is standing out in these games, and at least in this game as well. It's not bad by any means. Lunar has wave clear. Garrosh can help out. Like, it's it's not going to be super slow, but I think with the Jaina Greymane just in itself, that is just so much more speed in between the lanes. Overall, we're in for a great game, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. Um, we'll see if we go into a game number three in just a second here as... Uh, Oh, 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 our observer knows exactly where to be. Are we going to see Harrison Ford? Do these, Harrison Ford, Harrison Jones, do these teams know? Do they know? Do they know about Harrison Jones? If you don't know who that is, uh, if you ever make it to Tomb of Spider Queen, slam the little gem that's right here. You can see it on my cursor. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Kage. Uh, that little gem, just spam click that. But it looks like no one's cool, so we're not going to see it. So on the left-hand side, we get the members of the no fun Chogall banning team, Big Bird on the Jaina, Coffee playing the Grey Mane, Unaleska on the Thrall, Selexia on the Ana, and Peng on the ETC. That is going to be the members of Uwu. On the right, we have the members of Better Than Bots. Evil Auto on the Lunar, Crafty on that Lucio. Some role changes here. Megan's going to be on the Li Ming. Eve, Dr. Evil will be on the uh, Leoric, and five, five Aces, excuse me, will be on the Garrosh. Um, let me pull up Towns for you as, as well as Lunar is going to be going into Sentinel Wisp at level one. That's gonna provide an insane amount of vision. I want you all to realize this, like here, let's see. Can I can I get Lunara Vision set up for you all here? I can hold V and oh no, ETC just cleared out the Sentinel Wisp. So I, I could have showed it for a second here. Once once it's been sitting in the bush for a second or two here, we can show. So right now you're seeing it and then you can see it expand. Like that is the vision between the lanes. It is absolutely insane how much it provides. And on a map like this where you're rotating and you need to have that vision is just, it's so beneficial for a team and, a, and, a, and the friendly members as we actually have just a bit of back and forth in this top lane. No one gonna go down just yet, but as I said, I think Members of our blue side, Uwu, will have a bit of a faster wave clear. Um, they are being a little a little harassment coming out from our red team, but I think Leork is actually going to catch up and make a little... Uh, that was a really... I like that. Eve, Dr. Evil is going to make a quick rotation to mid lane to actually push up the wave a little bit faster to maybe even force them to make a rotation out of top and maybe miss out experience. Just little things like that make big differences in games as uh, Yuna is going to rotate to mid, make sure they're not missing out, but the friendly team's already there. The big thing to note here too is uh, Unaleska is going to be going into the Echo the Elements at level 1, so they want to have last hit onto, or uh, yeah, last hits after the Chain Lightning onto these minions to stack that up. ETC is going to be going into the Proc Rocket level 1, and Jaina has the fingers are frost so they're looking for those regeneration globes both of them are looking for 20 
regeneration globes total, and then the uh, Garrosh is just looking for another uh, 12 ground breakers into the enemy team to finish out that war breaker from level one. But they do have the, I believe it's damage over time at the five stack mark, so they'll be looking for a couple more just to get a, a little extra damage when they are trying to press into this enemy team. So far, though, just solid rotations. No one getting picked off. Some good harassment between lanes. Uh, and yeah, it's just... It's safe. It's no one really playing too aggressive. I'm watching Thrall's health bar go down in bottom lane, but I don't expect Thrall to get picked off anytime soon. It's it, Both of them have good sustain into each other, and uh, they were also backing off. I could see them actually, I think, maybe doubling back for well, if I'm not mistaken. Either way, Jane are going to throw a Blizzard up in this top lane. Lee Ming looking for a combo in there as well, and ETC just eats the majority of that damage as they're uh, actually going to kind of block some of the wave clear from said Lee Ming with that. Peaking though into mid as they continue to make rotations, Evil Auto was pushing up the front gate. They did go into the Nature's Calling at level 1, which is basically going to be increased toxic damage to anything that isn't a hero. So your siege is, is, is increased right there from the level 4. Greymane looking for the dive with the go for the, th excuse me, with the um, Dark Flight and almost finding the kill into Evil Auto. They'll back off for now, rotate back into mid, and continue to soak up experience as well as look for these gems. Team of the Spider Queen, um, one of the slower maps that start out, but it's really interesting as to how quickly it starts to kick off as well, in the sense of, you know, you have these these slow starts over here, and, you know, everyone's slowly getting their gems, but then all of a sudden, just like, this this map ramps up immediately, and we'll see if that'll be the case. No one able to get a turn in just yet. The members of our red team are up and available. Better than bots looking for that. Power side from ETC will go into a couple, but no one to be picked picked off as there's a wraith walk from dr evil in mid and they're able just to back off for now really good play coming out from everyone and just overall solid game number two here the members of better than bots looking pretty warmed up and chugga 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 ooh woo <laughs> are doing their best to defend against them as uh this might be turning who, who are we missing on turning actually 27 gems remain on the leork so that is going to be the majority of what they need to get turned in and they actually only need, what, 26 if my caster math uh, serves me correct. Seven talents here will be hit by our red team first as their rotations are a little bit quicker. In between lanes, Li Ming consistently throwing out these arcane orbs. Power slide backwards from ETC just to get them away from the enemy side. Lunar has some really good damage into coffee, actually shredding their health down to about half. Selexia is just going to throw out some healing darts as well, and turn in potential exists on both sides. They're definitely watching this Leoric, but Lucio sitting with 10 gems themselves. They only need another, what, 13 picked up for them to get the actual turn in potential. Sleep dart onto Lunara. Pengu's going to try and step in, but they're going to be thrown around. Face melt into the blizzard. Five, X, five aces needs to back off for a second, and... We'll just clear that out and just continue to do rotations. Maybe sneaking off. Dr. Evil, the moment they leave lane, Yuna's cur curious as to where they're going. They check them and see them in mid as they actually might try and sneak up into this top. They're, they're expecting them to turn in over there, but Big Bird should communicate this to the friendly team. The Gladiator's Medallion will be used. Crafty trying to chase in, and that will be turn-in potential for our red team. Better than bots with the first turn-in for game number two on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Can they turn this game as well, and can they take us to a game number three? Groundbreaker onto ETC. Lucio still chasing in blizzard out from the jaina sleep dart connecting on to five aces as the arcane orb goes backwards and Greymane dives in with the uh dark flight and will find the kill first blood over two chugga chugga ooh, ooh. <laughs> Bottom lane is going to be pushed out. Top lane to be the same. Uh, yeah, they won't get much value in top lane. Mid lane should be where they really want to try and push in. Uh, top lane will be denied because the members of uh, Uwu understand that this is going to be a boss priority lane. So getting rid of that means that they don't have much structure damage. And they already did have a little bit on them. Sleep Dart came out from Selexia. Will not connect. Bottom lane, the Orc is still pushing into Unaleska. Dr. Evil is going to force them back, but they're sustaining fairly well. Big Bird is so low and goes down the Sleep Dart, not connecting. But they find a counter kill into Lunara, and Sleep Dart will go out onto Garrosh. They take a bit of a nap. They manage to get the gems that were dropped by the Jaina, and this Spider Queen phase will end here. Dr. Evil going to Wraith walk out. And uh, 10 Talentiers will be coming through in just a second, so we'll cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what those look like for all of you. And we'll watch as the blue team kind of hang around and look for a potential turn-in. Hey, Ektar, how you doing, bud? They let coffee get Greymane, yikes. I mean, you can't just ban out coffee, though, because they actually, they targeted coffee's, um, 
Kel'Thuzad as well. I don't think they ban the Alarak, but like it's just one of those things like you just you can't ban out all their heroes, and it's just like what is the lesser of the evils that I want to deal with in this in this game? And it looks like the the lesser of the evils is going to be a Grey Mane. As there's an Entomb from Leoric, uh, Unaleska trying to survive as they just got their ten talent tiers. And look at that zoning on the gems in bottom lane. They're gonna lose. I believe that's fifteen. I believe those are five each. Warlords challenge on to Ana. They don't make it out of this alive. Power slide, face melt, ETC trying to back them out of here. Selexia so very low will go down to the damage over time from Evil Auto as Coffee is going to just try and turn into them and they end up going down. They drop gems. Wave of Force going to push ETC around and that is a double kill during an objective phase in favor for the red team. Not the place you want to be. Oh my god. Peng... Hang so close to being able to find a power slide onto that Lunara. I don't know if they would have had the kill into them, but we'll have to see what happens here. I um, also want to note here that ETC did not go into the loudspeakers at level 4. That's why you're not seeing a kind of a bigger knockback radius on that W. They actually went into speed metal, and that speed metal, I believe, gives a 15% movement. Excuse, uh, excuse me, 20%. So you basically be 10% slower than mounted speed. So that's that's pretty good right there. And I believe that's any time they use guitar solo, or is it any ability? Basic or heroic ability, nearby enemies grab, uh, gain movement speed. So this will allow them to chase into the Lucio, because Lucio is going to also be amping it up here and there. Peng is taking a lot of damage. They try and drop the Mosh, but it's on a 10 second cooldown. They get bursted down. Let Ring of Frost will come out. Lucio is going to be able to survive with a bit of health, but they have this go for the throw from the Grayman. They find the kill into the uh, Garrosh Evil Auto with just a sliver of health. There's the Chain Lightning to get the kill. They lose their ETC, but they clean up too. The Lucio gets the speed boost off the wall. Greymane dives in, tries to go for some sort of damage, go for the throw down a two second cooldown. They're not able to get that in time. And this will be 47 gems in the pocket of the members of Uwu with better than bots able to turn in here. But who, who, my friends, are is the one? The orc actually has enough for the turn in almost, and they need to turn in. Like Dr. Evil, go turn in, my dude. They're actually, they have like, they'll put them at 51, but still. Now is probably your most opportune time to get 27 gems off of your Leoric. What do I know, though? Speed Metal versus Lucio is mandatory. I, I could see that, yeah. I, the only reason I was, I was noting is because I wonder if we're going to go into Encore at level 13. Like, does does not taking Face Melt mean they're not going to go into Encore since you have the smaller radius and it's just harder to hit people with the Face Melt? Boombox, Power Slide, Mosh Pick, and a Connect onto 2. Wave of Force will interrupt that. Li Ming doing a good job of denying the mosh pit duration to the enemy team, and they're not able to capitalize as the blue web weavers descend, and this will be, I feel, a little defensive for the members of Uwu as they need to clear out this mid lane. Leoric already in bottom lane. Jaina dumps a blizzard on top of this to try and help out. They do have spell armor, so long as that kind of yellowish, or excuse me, the orangish circle is on the ground from the mage from that camp. Mid lane got bursted down quite a bit. Evil Otto is clearing things out as they did go into Nature's Calling at level 4. That's that increased toxic damage damage to non-heroic things, because I believe it does apply to structures as well. Evil Auto looking for a flank with a friendly team. The Orc is still in bottom lane. This is going to be a 4v5 if they really try and do this, and we'll see what happens here. Face Melt from ETC bops them back. They do go into the loudspeaker, excuse me, Encore at level 13. Lucio pushing forward. Crafty going to get rooted. Leaping Strikes from Lunara come out as that's going to be the Ring of Frost onto Garrosh. There's a break it down from the Lucio. Selexia so low, there's going to be a toss on top of them. Go for the throat. Greymane won't find any sort of counter kill as there's a Nano Boo. Oh, the auto attack actually finds it, but Greymane, you have overextended my friend and five aces oh this is actually risky for five aces because there could be a counter kill into them or they look for evil auto do they can they can they actually get evil they get evil auto so they're at least gonna find that kill right there that's a big pickup for them if they could actually get yuna that'd be even bigger for the opposing side but she gets a chain lightning out and they will just back off but here's the thing chat 42 gems are on dr evil and what are you doing my friend where are you going turn in what are you, are you trying to be money bags or something? Are you day? Not. What? I'm confused, chat. Am I being trolled? I'm being trolled, 100%. Uh, maybe they're waiting for Nara. I don't know. They're still not going for turn. I'm watching. I'm just literally watching mini map right now. I'm not even watching the, the rest of the enemy team. <laughs> Dear Lord, someone else turns in because Leoric won't, and that's going to be objective going over to the side of the red team. 50 gems on Dr. Evil. Are they just like, I think I think they've Dr. Evil's got a little bit of a day in them, and they're just like, I need the money bags. I hope you also note that you don't get, uh, you know, you don't get MVP stuff for custom games, so. 
Coffee's death was so expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take you with me, bitch. <laughs> Yuna's gonna get caught by the Entomb from Leork. They're gonna sustain fairly well here. They do have the Earthquake in one second. They're trying to sustain themselves. Do they pop the Earthquake? It would have given them Frostwolf Resilience stacks, but they don't. They hold on to it. They're gonna go down in bottom lane. They lose, I wanna say there was like somewhere in the 18 to 20 gem range. So it was a little bit right there. Bottom lane is gonna be pushing out. They get the fort, but they end up just clearing out top lane fairly quickly. Mid is gonna be uh, fairly low as well. Peng is gonna back off, but they take a big damage from the uh, uh, from the purple wave or the haunting wave or whatever necrotic wave there we go comes out from the spider queen but they get the mid lane fort as well as the bottom and honestly with the enemy team in bottom lane dealing with this they could actually go for the top lane fort but they actually double back and they're looking for a fight into this i don't think they're going to have anything happen they do have 16 talent here advantage for the time being the level 13 on li ming isn't that cannoneer i've, I've seen this all the time when Li Ming uses an ability, her next basic attack deals damage. The basic attack damage is increased by 75%. 75% and deals spell damage instead of physical. Stacks up to three times. I see Cannoneer all the time. Are you just saying it's not you're saying it's not synergistic with the orb build because she has to be further away, so she won't typically get autos? Which I could agree with, but maybe it's just for those moments where they're literally just gonna be someone having like Greyman or someone in their face and they need the potential counter burst. I don't know. That's my thought into it. Either way, that's going to be Wraith Walk from Leork. They are into the uh, Royal Focus and Ominous Wraith as uh, they did go for the back-to-back turn-ins here. This will be another Webweaver descending. But as I noted previously, the Webweavers descend up as far as your minion wave is. Excuse me, the enemy minion wave is. And the enemy minion wave for top lane was over by the fort. So that's actually going to be pushed back a little bit, giving Jaina time to clear out bottom lane with the help of Ana. They also managed to deal with to mid on top of this. Peng is going to drop the loudspeaker. They're getting cooldown on the mosh pit, which is actually off cooldown. All that's on cooldown currently is going to be Entomb from Leoric. 16's even on both sides as the top lane fort is being assailed by the Webweaver. Bottom lane, at, like everything's stepping in right now. And the members of Better Than Bots want to take us to a game number three. Will they be able to do so? Or I, I, it, it's, it's honestly like... The later half of the game is starting to lean in their favor fairly hard here, and that's that's where I'm I'm starting to sit. <laughs> Just a single fort in top lane, so very low. They're gonna find a leaping strike, Lunar power slide out. Leaping strikes will continue as they get some decent damage, but this is gonna be a warlord's challenge onto the Jaina, who's gonna pop the medallion. Ring of Frost is dropped into the ground right next to them. They drop the blizzard on top of Leork, who's gonna wraith walk right out of there to get out of the Jaina damage. Combo out from Li Ming. They find the kill into Greymane, but they're gonna get the kill into the Leork. It's a one for two overall in favor for Uwu as uh, Crafty Trent's gonna. Try Try and harass into the back line. ETC has no mosh for the next 90 some seconds. They're gonna actually toss the ETC around. Power slide back onto the garage. Gonna face melt them. That's gonna be 7.2 seconds per face melt or per hero hit by that little boom box. And you're already seeing it was at 90 seconds, like not even two seconds ago, and it's at 50 some now. So definitely the showcasing the level of value from the uh face melt, excuse me, from the earth. Oh my god. Encore. I was going to say Earthquake. From the Encore level 13. Uh, no turn availability for our red team. Ten gems are necessary for the blue. Leork is sitting in bush and getting vision for the friendly team and will respawn in bottom lane if they decide to stay right there. But right now they need basically three more waves. I, technically like 3.2, however you want to break it down. 3.3 repeating because they need the extra gem from another. Turn availability of those here now, since they have so many stacked up waves. They stay, they need to find a solid level, though, between these two teams. I'm going to cycle through those numbers just to get an idea of what those look like as uh, we will be approaching 20s on both sides. They have the turn availability. Will they be able to get there in time? Power slide, mosh. No! It was off cooldown. That was actually a decent setup for a mosh. I thought they would have caught so actually Li Ming might have not been in that. So they might have seen it and said, like, cool, I'm not gonna wait. I'm not gonna get just a free not gonna give a free wave of force interrupt over to that Li Ming. So they back off, but look at Li Ork with this massive flank. But it was pretty telegraphed through the minion wave since they stepped through the enemy minions. You can well see them on the mini map. So they they go ahead and they just respect where the enemy team sits, where the enemy team is going to be with their levels as well in just a second, and they're just gonna have to turtle up and wait for the waves to crash into them. But this gives them time to grab gems. It's a rough spot to be in on the side of Uwu. Better than bots, seemingly building momentum here. 
But as someone said in the last game, one Mosh can change the game. We'll see if that's the case here. Pang is going to just literally drop the Mosh. There's the Ring of Frost underneath that. There's going to be a couple members. Earthquake underneath that as well. No 20 talents here, so there's no, there's not going to be any sort of Earth and Shields for the friendly team as Li Ming is going to find a double kill. And this is almost a triple as Big Bird is so very low. Gilnay and Cocktail backwards from the Greymane. They're going to speed boost into them. Gil Greymane's just trying to run on out of here and will be able to do so. Taps well. Big Bird, Selexi, and Coffee still defending, but that was a mega loss to lose your thrall and etc right there especially giving 20s faster over to the enemy team now you have a lot of defense to, to deal with right now as they're just trying to keep all of their keeps up coffee and top lane is showing big bird and bottom doing their best it's just right now defensive posturing for the blue team for the next 20 seconds easily no death metal blink or turbus wait Oh, oh, you're trying to guess what they're going to go at level 20? Um, Torbus would be cool. I think, like, Torbus plus Encore is a really good combo because you have so many, you have so many opportunities for mosh pits, so, like, why not just constantly rip moshes? Like, I think that's such an uh, opportunistic moment as the Catapult will find the keep in top lane, unfortunately. Boss will be coming through over here. Grayman and friends looking for the turn in, though. Watch that on the minimap on the bottom lane as they won't be able to get there in time. Boss will come through top, so they're going to have to deal with that. They have a Web Weaver for the defensive uh, tooling, I guess you could say. They have, they have a Web Weaver for mostly just defensive purposes. Jane is trying to find 20. Big Bird and yeah, the Crafty's trying to jump in onto them. Do they have their ice block? They do have it. Uh, is Oh, but they're also going to have the buried alive. There's the ice block just in time. Lucio sounds the barrier. There's the Ring of Frost coming out. Big Bird so very low. They get the Nana Boost. They're trying to get the Counter Burst into the enemy team and Lucio will go down. Somehow Jane is living through this. The healing from Selexia is way too good. Power Slide Face Melt. That's going to be triple kill as the Web Weavers come out but the boss is wailing on core. This won't end game. It's going to take a lot of damage into the core but still they need to clear it out because they don't want to give the enemy team. Actually, you know what? I might have been wrong on this. That boss might have ended a game, but they burned this down way too quickly. Lunara will clear things out in top lane. Webweaver and bottom still pushing out, and this is just absolute chaos across Tomb of the Spider Queen, but we are we are seeing a potential turnaround. A evil auto needs to find some sort of good positioning. Is going to get the leap over. Greymane, do you go for the throat? They do, and they find the kill. Actually, might have just been Dark Flight right there. And staggering out of death is massive for this team. That really is big for them. They don't have another turn in potential here. We can actually look and show you. They have, what, 5, 26. 26 gems currently in their pocket, if I'm not mistaken. They're rushing this. I don't know if they end. I don't know if they end. They can maybe get a keep in top lane, but they really want to commit to the entire front gate first, just to keep it. Just to, well, they don't want to. They don't want to overstep and potentially have a, a tunnel to get out of, or like at least a a more narrow corridor to disengage through. Crafty trying to chase into this, but decides not to. They back off. Twenty-one to twenty-one. Twelve to twelve in kills, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very, very tense game. It is going to be death metal for the ETC. Uh, no tour bus, I believe, because this is death metal, right? Yeah. Earth and shields for the thrall, so it's going to be providing shielding for the friendly team. This is a big pickup for the thrall player. Like, you know, that's that's a big that's a big help for the friendly team during some of these fights, and that is going to be Earthquake also now off cooldown. Face melt. Excuse me. Uh, Mosh pit going to be down for the next six seconds, so if they get one face melt, that'll just take that away. Or they can just wait the two seconds and they'll get it. Either way, uh, gems potential turn in for our red team. And um, shout out to Kage, the observer right now, who's just constantly getting everything in front of you. If it was me doing this, it would just be a lot of me clicking on the minimap and being like, look over here constantly, because it's just there's so much happening in our game number two. Better than bots want this game number three. And ooh, ooh they're just they they are chugga, chugga, chugga. I don't want game two. That's horrible. Please. No, that was bad. <laughs> turn in is here they're oh wait no 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 they're not rushing in for two who 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 uh leork leork's the one who's got to turn in or uh, quite a few members need to turn in right now they know this they they see this happening they need literally one gem from one or two members Peng is gonna back off right now this is this is such a tense moment because if turn in happens and it will top lane's gonna be pushing in great main do you have anything they don't this is, this is a tense moment, and Tomb comes out onto Jaina, who's actually not in a spot for them to find any sort of kill into them. The Ring of Frost comes out, there's so much counter kill potential right now as the Mosh was locking them down for a second or two. Big Bird so very low, Ice blinks away just to get away from the enemy team damage, and Lunara ends up going down. Li Ming throwing as many arcane orbs backwards as they possibly can as Coffee's like, I need to back off of this. And here, they got two, 
They go for Webweaver clear and they just regain control. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good Tomb of the Spider Queen game, but they need to prioritize top lane because that is going straight to core with like quad catapults as well. Now they got Grey Man on the case. This should be fine. Wow. Six gems. All right, Ektar. All right, look. All right. All right. What? What are you even talking about? They had 14, 5, 3, 2, and whatever. I don't know. I counted 26. Go in my head and come back out and tell me I'm wrong. All right? Well, we to be cleared out on the left-hand side. We have the members of Better Than Bots needing to turn in 70 gems. I feel like this is the max I've ever seen it go to. I think 70 is the highest I, 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 I often see the Webweaver uh, turn in potential get to. But 55 on the left-hand side. They're going to dump the 17 they currently have in, and uh, this is this is an interesting spot in general. Um, they do have web weavers. They didn't... Hmm. Trying to think, like, do they could they have de could they have stalled out the Bruiser Camp a little bit longer? Maybe. I think they really need to make sure that they manage top lane, so they don't want to really. I think it's just getting stuff on the map at this point. I was just about to ask, what is when's Boss off a cooldown? And it it actually just came off a cooldown. It's it's up and available. I'm on the edge of my seat. Coffee is playing spicy. This is a really good game. This is a really really good series. Once again, shout out to Kaga who's doing all of our observing. Thanks for them to jump in and uh, well make our lives easier so I can just yell about the game. Boss is going to be fought over. Is this? Do they? Do they see this happening? They don't. They're making the guess though. I keep swapping over division here and there. Big Bird's gonna throw an Ice Lance through. They see that it's low. I think they see it's low. They need to go now. They need to go yesterday. They needed to go two hours ago. They won't be able to get it. Next next fight wins, baby. You think so? Ring of Frost. Mosh Pit's interrupted right there. They're gonna drop the Sound Barrier as well. Leaping Strikes onto Peng, who does end up going down. The Death Mosh will connect onto a couple players, but there's no one in, in, in place for this. Coffee tries to dive out, but they're not able to do so. They need to go back for the boss. If they don't, this is boss ending games. Unileska's gonna go down. This is Leoric chasing in onto them. There's gonna be a push off from Lucio onto a couple other players. Coffee's gonna get knocked up from the Groundbreaker. They go down, and boss is gonna be on core five members rush through and better than bots should be able to take us to a game number three with an insane boss play right at the end the ggs are called from our blue team as ooh woo is going to be matched here by better than bots on tomb of the spider queen we head to a game number three gg well played wow just wow. All right, while you're looking at stats, everyone, and while we get the next game running, I'm going to run to the bathroom. So BRB. Alrighty, I already have a map. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, I missed it. Okay, there we go. Ooh. Okay, okay. So this will be... Map? Alright, All this pen is dead. I'm done. I'm done with you. You're dead. Dead to me. Brand new pen.
Can you show us talents? I'm sorry, I I ran to the bathroom and then I had a and then I had a lobby immediately. Sorry, sorry, I did not show talents. Sorry. Uh, absolutely, but well played both teams. Mm-hmm. Hold on, we let's get a little day in here. Stream deck, you have one job. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's update the team score on the right, and uh, we're ready to go for game number two. I actually just have to update the little map editor. That's what I have to do. It'll be map pick from them, and we are going to here. Cool. All right, I am ready to go. Let me let the players know that I am good on my end. Oh, we need one more. We need one more player still. While I have all of you here, while we are waiting for uh, our final player and to get into the final game. Caster R. Spooky Worm. Um, tomorrow night, your bot is so sassy. It's killing you? Good. It's not my bot. It's some Someone else made it. It's it's. Uh, you can add it to your own Twitch streams, too. Anyways, uh, tomorrow night, because this is our final game of the evening. After this, we'll raid someone over. Uh, once again, thank you so much to the raid from Allura. Thank you so much to the raid from uh, Yuna. Thank you for the raid from Stark. Very much appreciated, my friends. Jazzy, thank you for the... Tier 1 for 14 months. I just now saw this. Uh, that was during the game. So thank you so much for the support, my friend. Very much appreciated. I hope you're doing well. Uh, so tomorrow night, Spooky Stream starts at 5 o'clock. Halfway through Spooky Stream. Somewhere probably in the 7 o'clock time. PDT. Uh, we'll do a Bark Box for Bandit. And then um, Thursday will be more casting. I have a special guest for that day. Friday, no stream. Saturday, Sunday will be CCL exhibition matches. Let's get into our draft for game. Number three on the left hand side, we got the members of <clears throat> Chugga 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 Chugga. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, and then we have better than bots on the right hand side. We find ourselves here on Battlefield of Eternity, and let's find out how we actually got to this map because we've had a lot of maps so far. The members of Uwu lost the coin flip to start out the day, and they are going to ban out Hanamura and Towers of Doom. Better than bots opted for map pick priority for game number one. They they banned out Infernal Shrines and Braxis holdout. First map was uh, Volskaya Foundry and won by the members of Uwu. The members of Better Than Bots opted for map pick priority for game number two and chose to take us to Tomb of the Spider Queen. In a wonderful back and forth, and that ended on a boss pit, the members of Better Than Bots won that map. So, the opposing side chose map pick, taking us to Battlefield of Eternity, giving first pick priority over to the opposing side. Why do you torture me like this? Ooh, woo. Uh, <laughs> we have this... Uh, we have this diva though to be banned on the right hand side. Uh, do we see any coffee bans? Do they do they prioritize coffee here? It's actually going to be Unaleska. They they actually ban out their our tennis for the second time in a row. Thank you, Ektar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The butts up command is actually best of butt spot. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. But butt spots, uh, butt spots, renowned everywhere. Cho banned out this time. Not Gaul, because I actually said Gaul earlier, because he's got one eye. Uh, is it the Grey Main ban? Oh no, excuse me. That's their. I'm sorry, I'm backwards right now. Today's the day. Uh, May will actually be the other ban. So pretty much, I think Woo Woo took all the same bans for all three games so far. You can't coffee. Yeah, exactly. I was talking about in the last game too. IDK, which dies faster, Bahamut's enthusiasm saying Uwu's name, or an ETC with Deathmosh? Damn. Speaking of ETC Deathmosh, we got an ETC on the right hand side for the members of Better Than Bots. Uh, what's our first pick priority for the members of Uwu? What are you what are you gonna go for here? Are you gonna lock in your race potential? Are you gonna lock in your main tank healer? What do you wanna prioritize? Garrosh is up and available. They could go Lucio Garrosh at the start. Ana Garrosh isn't a bad idea whatsoever either. There's a lot of good directions. Decker Kane will be grabbed. A lot of AoE set up. A lot of zoning. And they're going to grab themselves the Kael'thuzad. Surprised a little bit about no uh, no nano boost from an Ana, But it looks like maybe they just want the, the healing and the setup from Decker Kane. Not 100% sure. But hey, looks like Kael'thuzad, excuse me, Coffee is going to get a comfort pick. Sorry, my back is just, it needs to be like, I need to get Gonzoed if anyone remembers what that reference is. They put him on the rack during one of the Muppet movies and he gets stretched out. And I'm like, I always picture them like when I was a kid, I remember turning to my mom and be like, that'd be great. And she's like, no, 
<laughs> It'd be awful. Lunar will be grabbed once again in the Lucio. I actually really like the Lunar from last name last game. Evil Auto had an amazing Lunara play, so I'm excited to see that for this next game. And Crafty was just a great Lucio. I wonder if Crafty is Crafty isn't like a, a, a typical like main, like he's not like DPS healer. He's he's Overwatch only. Excuse me, they're Overwatch only. I, they, just because they play Tracer and they're playing Lucio right now. Li Ming to be banned out. They don't want to deal with the combo, the poke potential onto the Immortal race and all that good stuff. What do they ban out? Because they don't really have any sort of race potential on the side of the, uh, on, on the side of Uwu. So they could look to ban out something like a Hanzo, Greymane, Vala. A lot of good options there. Um, Hanzo and Kill that I feel like would actually pair a little bit well together. I kind of like that. Greymane would be an option as well, but I feel like Greymane might be played only by coffee well I, I just don't know what their what their roles are like i i know big bird obviously plays hanzo that's why i was kind of leaning into that a little bit they get rid of the joanna because there's blinds into lunara so that doesn't that doesn't blame me what or i don't blame that whatsoever because of just the auto attack reduction you can you can put into the enemy team i wonder if we see a cassia no there's the hanzo and there's a garage that makes sense makes a lot of sense teach bandit to walk on your back he's too scared sesame street yeah 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 Crafty actually mains Blaze, if you remember correctly. Hmm. Hmm. I'd love to see some Blaze. We won't, I don't think at the time, because they're probably going to be healing here. ETC, Lunara, Lucio. They need something solo into what they don't know. So solo, Kel'Thuzad, not Kel'Thuzad, sorry. Um, Lior could be a good option once again. It was great in the last game. They're going to go for actually a Deathwing and a Sylvanas. Okay. Hanzo could go into auto attack base build, which would be good into the Deathwing because you do have Giant Slayer at 13, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, you can definitely, they, they do have tools to deal with the Deathwing. We'll see if that's going to be the case here. What do they go into for the solo lane? I mean, Leork actually is a great option. If 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 Yuna plays a Leork, that'd be great into Deathwing. Malfeel's not a bad idea either because it's percent based damage still. It does give you good race potential, gives you some dive. Your front line, it's a little weaker, but they're gonna go into Thrall. Thrall also does have the uh, b -b 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 the Thunder Roll. No, no, Rolling Thunder at level one, which is what I see a lot of the Thrall players go into when they play against Deathwing because it's percent based damage from your auto attack after using your Chain Lightning on the enemy hero. So I believe it's like, 3% or something of the max health, uh, not not like the current health, like Greymane's Cursed Bullet, but the actual pool. So it's, you, let's say it's 3% of 4,000. Um, you basically hit him with a Chain Lightning and then you can deal that extra damage. So I, I, I think the Thrall is actually still a good option. Hanzo still deals damage into them, but just in the 1v1 sort of uh, mechanic, the Thrall's still great. I was just thinking like maybe Leoric, maybe, maybe the Malfeel, but I think Yuna might be looking for more of a comfort pick on top of this like it's not like oh like comfort pick over like meta it's like it's it's like this is my meta comfort pick and i actually really really like that thrall because it does play well into the death wing regardless good call tireless yes imperious imperious could have been an option their wave clear is a little slow and they don't really uh oh, they could use they could use more setup but i like the thrall most overall like i think this is just a really really good pickup for for their team and uh, we're ready to go. We're here into game number three on the left hand side. We got the members of Ooh Woo, Unaleska on the Thrall, Big Bird on the Hanzo, Peng on the Garrosh, Selexia on the Deckard, and Coffee on their Kale Thuzad. On the right hand side. We got the members of Better Than Bots. We have got Megan420 on the Deathwing, Evil Auto on that Lunara, ETC to be played by Five Aces, Dr. Evil on the Sylvanas, and Crafty Trent will be on the Lucio. Let's check out what we see here for our first engagement. We do have Draconic Might for the Deathwing, so it's going to be getting uh, protection by the way for a second or two when they do lose one of their armor plating. Sylvanas going to lock down one of the towers immediately as the Molten Breath comes out as well, and they're just trying to burn this down before the enemy team rotates up here, and they're mostly just trying to get a little damage into that front gate. They're not looking to take dam down the entire thing. Really good Groundbreaker from Peng just to be able to get these stack. That's going to be killed as odd finding one, excuse me, two stacks on the Master of the Cold Dark. We'll keep you up to date on those master of the cold dark stacks they need 30 of them total at 15 the halfway mark they'll be able to get their glacial spike which is the uh the little ice spike that comes out from the center of the ground that they can cast uh, i also want to point out that we are going to be seeing scroll of uh ceiling no i always have them backwards 
Scroll of Identity, sorry. Scroll of Identity picked up for the Decker Canes. That's going to be able to, uh, Scroll of Ceilings, the actual base talent, and I was thinking of Field Study for some reason. Either way, they're gonna have armor reduction when they do finish that out, so that's gonna be nice into the Death Wing or just really anyone that they're able to hit with that. And it shouldn't be too hard to hit especially during these objective phases since everyone kind of steps up or at least uh, stacks on these objectives and they're just hard pushing into this top lane. They're waiting for a couple members in the bottom and they're going to play into this up here. I believe Gladiator's Medallion was used really quickly, I think on five aces. We can actually cheat and look at that, I think. No, it wasn't. I swore, oh no, it was Sylvanas used it. That's who it was. I misread the uh, the model that actually it came out of either way. Uh, Decker Kane will poke onto this and they see that someone's on the camp. So Peng is going to jump up. Dr. Evil coming in over here as well, looking for coffee. He's just going to dot them up a little bit. Toss onto Dr. Evil. Chains coming out from the Kiltazad. They pull in onto Lunar and they take way too much damage. They're going to go down. Hanzo will be in that bottom lane and into a Deathwing. That should be easy stacks on their redemption from level one. Another chain coming out from coffee, not able to connect onto any anyone right there. There are probably dumber questions than that, but I haven't heard dumb Wait, what? Any chance we can get five? Oh, 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 okay. Sorry, I didn't realize that people were asking Amorin for Heroes of the Storm. What? What? Is it different studios? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm reading too much of chat. Let's focus in on the game because we have um, Beleth and Alarian coming down from the heavens and hell, and they'll be uh, brawling out fairly soon. For anyone that wants to know what the minimap icons mean, we always have natural vision of the blue team. So uh, the axes that you're currently seeing as Kage is showing, this is where the... Uh, Red Immortal will spawn since we're seeing the blue vision. So its axis will be race, shield will be defense. So that's why you're seeing Alarian coming down to this bottom portion. And Bel uh, excuse me, Beleth, excuse me, trying to learn the names, uh, is in the upper portion. So the uh, the first objective is pretty standard. Always goes in this north-south positioning. Big Bird getting a lot of damage into them, but they won't get picked off. Yuna coming down here. Just going to poke a little bit onto Megan. Doesn't get them really low at all and this is just a lot of back and forth during an immortal phase that actually Lunara is just racing down with Sylvanas and between Evil Auto and Dr. Evil they've got a lot of good damage on those two heroes so they now need to force them back as Hanzo still at 8 out of the 12 stacks on Redemption they did go into the uh, 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 serrated blades there we go no serrated arrows at level 4 to allow them to have a little bit faster race potential with that scatter arrow or, excuse, yeah the, with the scatter arrow is there locking down Peng? no no one's gonna get locked down. I thought, I thought, uh, dear, I just, this game, I can't catch any of the abilities on top of any of these players. It's just, everything is just moving so quickly because, well, there's just a lot of flashy plays happening as Evil Auto's going to go down to the Keltuzad, Death and Decay, the snipe coming out from Coffee. It's gonna be another kill for the blue team as they have been, they have been winning in kills, but they're losing out because there's constant pressure into their lanes. Hanzo actually needs to go into top lane to clear things out as Crafty's gonna bop them, bop Yuna actually into the uh, the stun from the Immortal. And right now they're doing their best to race against this as they find an ETC. Megan comes in as well, chains out from the Kelta Zod, but I think that just builds stacks for them in general. It's 13 out of the 40, master, excuse me, 30 ma master the cold dark stacks on those. So they'll be able to get their Glacial Spike in uh, one more stack. Crafty getting low here from Big Bird. They need to be careful. They will rotate towards their friendly team. Immortal race will kind of be halved right here. It's actually like roughly like 200 in between the two Immortals. So it's a fairly close Immortal race. And I believe this is the first one of the game. Big Bird already on the left-hand side because it is standardized. And they're just going to try and race this down. Meanwhile, Garrosh is going to potentially find Sylvanas in the bottom lane. No, they're just taking them on a bit of an adventure. And this gives them time to potentially win out the race here. It's actually going to be so close between both of these teams. Will they? be able to get that last little bit of damage with Hanzo they do I believe yes they actually managed to kill no I read it wrong they lose Beleth was the one who was actually uh who, who gets saved right there and so the red team will get it that was so close I actually couldn't I was just watching the numbers I was like okay no no they got that and then I misread it either way sevens up on both sides we have our Hanzo up in top lane and we have Sylvanas with the immortal trying to push this up. There's going to be the Glacial Spike, the combo out onto Dr. Evil, but it's just a little bit of poke. Bottom lane fork goes down and Belth should be able to confirm top. They've got some decent auto attack damage in here and they also have a wave as well. And the, the immortal clear during this isn't the fastest in the world. So they might lose double fort during this objective phase or just be 
they're going to be extremely close to losing it. And bottom lane now is going to be pushed out by the enemy team. So I was thinking they'd be able to clear that out. Not the case. Hanzo did go into the... Um, Never outmatched at level 7, which is basically auto attacks, I believe, into enemy heroes give you cooldown reduction on the scatter arrow. Yes. They're going to chase into this. They lock down the tower. Big Bird, do they have the agility? They're going to double back around this. Lucio going to push off. Deathwing going to do the drop on top of them. Hanzo just trying to get the damage into Crafty. They throw a potion out, but Big Bird is going to make the big play and walk away with 20-some health. Maybe even we saw some teen digits right there. But they poke them back and no one's able to step in. Meanwhile, Unileska in bottom lane still pushing things out, trying to close that experience gap. And the funny thing is, is we have the experience, like we have kills in favor for the blue team, but the enemy team has just pushed into these lanes, got so much structure value and has so much passive experience gain that that is the reason you're seeing a solid half a level lead in favor for better than bots. What is the next play? We should be seeing our next Immortal phase fairly soon, too. It's not the longest cooldown from when the Immortal goes down to when it's announced. I believe it's a 1 minute 30 timer on that one. Deathwing taking a lot of damage, but you can't really CC Deathwing, so they'll just be able to back off right there, just losing one of their armor platings, and they could actually tap the well if they really wanted to. I don't think they have for a little bit, so they're going to hang out for now. They'll be fine with the 30 armor and the majority of their health. I'm watching minimap to see if anyone's able to chase it. Pang is actually going to get hit with the Wailing Arrow. They're going to get bopped around. There's no way you live through that one. They end up going down. I think they chopped it. Wow, that's a triple mosh coming out. Big Bird has no interrupt into this because there's no heroic. There's no Dragon's Arrow. And that's Kel'Thuzad going down. Deathwing with the Cataclysm through. Gets the ground, excuse me, the Earth Shatter out as well. And better than bots are looking better than game number one here as they step in through this top lane. They have some lockdown with the Sylvanas Black Arrows. You can see that around her, she kind of has that 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 bla the black little tendrils. Those are when, um, that's how you know that her traits up and available are being used when it's up and available. Well, that, I think it's like a 30 second cooldown, so it's not the longest for that trait right there. We still have our Immortal Phase up, but they're just trying to soft push into this keep front gate, open things up a little bit further. Bellowing Roar from the Deathwing. Chains go out, but they aren't able to pull Meg in but still taking a lot of damage themselves 19 out of the 30 stacks on the master of the cold dark for coffee as this immortal race has begun and we have bottom lane pressure in favor for the members of uwu can they defend alarian seems like it oh it's just one impaler i thought they actually had their siege giants or siege camp i just realized that the shaman camp still off of earth is off a of cooldown so obviously they didn't grab it duh bahamut but we have tens on both sides Pretty standards. Nothing. Ooh, wait, hold on. Pull in. That's Lucio. They're going to use the medallion and they get away. I don't. If Crafty didn't use medallion, I think they would have gone down. They're going to try. Oh, they get stunned out by the immortal. That was really well played by Pang. They didn't need the stay a while, but they still attempted it just to lock them down and really solidify and, and get that kill because now no healer. They can try and step in this enemy team. That's a chain coming out from Kel'Thuzad, not connecting. Pang taking some sustained damage from Evil Auto. They might try and turn onto them. There's going to be the. Uh, Frost Nova, I believe, from Kel'Thuzad on the ground for some slow and also just trying to build out those stacks. Nine more necessary until they get the 75 spell power increase, and that will be Hanzo traded out for the Lunara, and Kel'Thuzad's just doing their best to stack up right now as the Thrall goes down. Can they trade out once again? They walk through the Shadow Fizzer to try and work their way out of here. Pang is doing their best just to get through these potions, but there's not enough from Selexi as they drop the Mosh. Coffee is going to get a, a stack out of this. They should be able to get out of here. Crafty might slow them down with a push off. Wow, coffee goes down. Hanzo rips an arrow from core. It will narrowly miss. And uh, we're going on an adventure. Just Brody quest starts to play. <laughs> oh God, blame Peng, no. I think that d d better than boss is trying different roles in game one. Oh, okay, Miss Windup Bird. Maybe that's okay. That that explains actually a couple of reasons why we're seeing different roles right now. Because I was like really confused going into game number two. So maybe that was it. Maybe they were just trying something out for game one. They're like, cool, we'll run it back game two and three. And I'll be honest, they're they're looking like they might be able to run it back here. They've got a level lead. They've got a talent lead, and they're pushing into bottom lane with the uh, immortal. Belith will be spawning down there, and we also have Deathwing up in top lane, who can take flight at any moment and rejoin the friendly team, because I believe it's been long enough for them to be able to... Here, I can actually cheat this. Hold on. Let me let me look, chat. Deathwing has 25 seconds so they can fly, so they're actually going to neander their thick booty down into bottom lane. <laughs> I also want to point out that they've got the, uh, the little uh, onion rings from the... 
mastery thing. So this is a very, Megan's played a lot of Deathwing apparently. Cataclysm for the, oh, that's a really good Cataclysm angle just to get towards the friendly team, but also get the damage over time on the ground from the, well, the burning from the Cataclysm. They're gonna get the well over here. Sylvanas and friends will confirm the keep as well. Can they step towards core? Immortal will lose its shielding and it steps into melee range at this time. Keep is down, Lucio pushes off, Big Bird's the target, Wailing Arrow onto them. Sylvanas gets the, uh, gets some good sh cold, sh oh my God, they get the, sh Shadow Dagger onto them for some decent damage. Peng is going to throw one member away. Leaping Strikes come out, and that is a Garrosh going down. The Immortals starting to wail on the core as Big Bird gets the agility over the wall, but the Immortals still pretty healthy, wailing on this core. Five Aces needs to back off, and they're not going to end. Evil Auto's like, I want to end this game right now. We've got a lot of damage. They're going to cook them from the distance, and it seems like they're going to be able to turn things around, and that'll be game number two, excuse me, three, over to the side of Better Than Bots to take the series in a 2-1 fashion. GG. Well played. Neander, yeah. Neander the little booty. GG's. GG's indeed. A good series. I agree, Clumsy. Good series. A very, very good series. Let's uh, let's try and get an interview with one of the players. Uh, shout out to Kage, who... Uh, well, shout out to Kage for doing all of our obs in that game number, or, or our second set of the day. Sorry, I am trying to figure out who I wrote down as the Trent. That's what it was. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Kage who did all of our observer work this afternoon, this this later half of the afternoon. Um, really appreciate them stepping in just to let me cast. It's always fun for me to not have to focus. So thank you so much. Very much appreciate it, my friend. I blame it on the taunts in game one. Hmm. How are you doing, Looney Tune? I think Hanzo's auto attack level one probably is a bit stronger than the W talent for burning the boss. Hmm. 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 Alrighty. Alright, let me move into a lobby. Thank you again, Kage. I will leave you. You're relieved of duties. All right, we're going to get one player in here in just a second, and then we will uh, get going into a little interview. Let me uh, bring it on back to Bandit and I. I don't think Neander's a word. Hmm. Okay. Cool. What's up? Hey, Crafty, congratulations on your 2-1 victory. How are you feeling, my friend? We are feeling great. We went into this... C and Uwu were like, okay, we just came from C. We're doing pretty okay in Division B so far. We're pretty happy with our performance. We're like, okay, this looks like the team to beat. And we just, we practiced, we scouted, and we executed. I honestly, like, it was such a fun series. Like, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in chat who are just like, oh no, but we wanted to ooh to win because we were all, but you guys played so so, like, the games were so fun to cast. So game number one, because someone was mentioning this in chat, were you doing some different role swaps? Because once you guys went into different roles in game two and three, it was just like the synergy, the the, the communication, the kills, the plays. W was game one a little bit of a experiment, I guess I could ask? It, yeah, yeah, it, it kind of was an experiment. And actually, we wanted to do Cho'Gal, but they banned it. Rude! No, trust me, I threw we a fit a, every. We had a backup experiment. But I, I was, I was, really I was well. visibly upset on stream about it. So, uh, <laughs> there is that. So don't worry, I was, I was upset for all of you. Uh, no, it was really, really good games. Um, so you're saying that you know you, you're coming into a new division this season. Did you change up any roles or practice or anything just to prepare for this, or are you just kind of still sticking to what you're, you know, tried and true? Uh. Yeah, I mean, pretty much most of it's the same. We promoted a sub that had been getting some playing time and we really liked what he was doing. So that's Aces, Five Aces is now our, mm -hmm. on our roster. He's a, he's our starting tank. So we are very happy with his performance so far and he's improving very quickly. So I, I'm really happy with that the team's playing right now. It's honestly, those games were 
they're, they're just great. They're just honestly so great. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm still just like, I'm blown away consistently by how all of you played and how you turned around those games. Um, going into game two and three, there's a little bit of, you know, that losing mentality. How do you as a team kind of come back from a losing game? Like, is it just like, all right, you know what? Our experiment didn't work out. We go back to what we know, or is there a little bit of pep talk that has to happen? Yeah, it, it was kind of both. Like, we had to talk ourselves back into it because we're like, okay, we really kind of screwed up that first game. Um, but we want to come back into this and we can do it. We can we can just go back to classic BTB and we can, we can do our best. And you know what? Even if we lose, we tried our best. So that's fine. It was honestly... Crafty, these these games were so good. I, I had such a blast casting them. I still can't get over them. So thank, thank you so you. much for, for providing such yeah. wonderful entertainment for all of us at home. Before I let you run out of here, are there any shouts that you'd like to give? The floor is all yours, my friend. Oh, of course. Uh, first of all, you for being such oh, a great you. caster. Thanks for casting. Um, shout out to the other team, Uwu. They are a very tough team. Like They deserve all the hype they're getting. They are a great team, and we're very good opponents so shout out to them and then of course shout out to the roster that's alto dr evil five aces and then megan um, i that's about it for shout outs thanks oh no my pleasure thank you for for the interview thank you for the games congratulations on your two on victory and i look forward to seeing you all further down in season 10 of ngs okay thank you you have a great